to go through the osmolarity types of examples. And so the question that we have here in the slides is really similar to the last question that we were considering in class. And so I thought it was a good starting point. So in this case, we have a mixed type of solution. And the extracellular fluid has either zero, uh, has 0.15 moles of sodium chloride and 0.1 moles of urea. We know that uh, sodium chloride can dissociate in solution. And so we are listing that here as 0.15 moles of sodiums, 0.15 moles of chlorides, and then we have also our urea. Urea is a non-dissociable substance. Most of the substances that we'll have are cons um, that have a full name, if you will, um, will not dissociate in solution. So what we have here is um, 0.1 moles of urea in addition to these other, th uh, these other uh, solutes in it. And so when we're thinking about what osmolarity has at time zero, and we're just basically saying, all right, well, where do we have more stuff outside or inside of the cell? We can go through and basically say, well, a concentration of all dissolved particles outside the cell is 0 0.4 moles. Um, and uh, the, um, the osmolarity is 0.4 moles or 400 milliosmoles. And therefore, it's hyperosmotic relative to the intracellular fluid, which has 300 milliosmoles. Now, the second thing we want to ask ourselves is, well, does it have uh, penetrating and non-penetrating particles um, or none or both? What do we have? And in this case, we have a mix. So we have non-penetrating particle here for sodium, non-penetrating particle here for chloride, and then we have a penetrating particle here for urea. And so um, we, since we have more non-penetrating particles outside the cell, um, or we have, sorry, uh, we have these non-penetrating particles outside the cell, and we have urea here. The question is, which way is water going to move? The way to break this down is to think about that, well, what's our concentration of non-penetrating particles? And so here, what we have is um, 0.15 moles of sodium, 0.15 moles of chlorides. Those are non-penetrating. And then if we ask, um, what's our concentration of non-penetrating particles in here? It's 300 milliosmoles, and so, or 0.3 osmoles. So we have the same concentration of non-penetrating particles inside and outside the cell. Now, um, and that's where water is going to flow. That determines where water is going to flow. Because urea is penetrating, it can slip through, and there's no uh, issue with it. So it's able to kind of get through the, the cell membrane, and um, we don't take it into consideration when we're asking where water is going to move, because it's going to set up its own equilibrium and be doing its own thing. So when we ask about this gradient of non-penetrating particles, we say that there's no gradient here, and so osmosis will not occur, and um, the, the water, there's no net movement of water into or out of the cell. So that's one of the things that we have there. Let's continue to the next slide, where we look at, um, we're looking at this, uh, this issue of um, several different types of examples. So we have a 0.3 molar solution of sodium chloride. We can work through that. The thing I wanted to pause on here was to say that ammonium chloride here, NH4Cl, is one that is penetrating. And so uh, when you're thinking about that, you, um, you assume that this breaks up into two components. Um, so when you're figuring out your osmolarity, you can do that. And then this is one of the very odd um, ions that actually is able to penetrate. And you'll learn about that, in, um, that there's a characteristics of red blood cells that actually um, permits this to occur. And it's something that happens um, and that you'll learn more about in 291. Um, for our purposes, we're just going to want to remember that this is uh, permeable. So if you're taking 291 later, um, then, uh, then basically you just want to remember that this is considered a penetrating solution. Urea is also penetrating and so therefore um, has a capacity to, uh, to be able to cross the cell membrane. And so that can help you be able to solve those types of example uh, and sample problems. So I hope that helps you with some of the osmolarity and tonicity types of uh, questions that we have. And uh, keep me posted if you have more. Thanks.